Can we talk about the fact that Chevy and Toyota, pound for pound, apples to apples, are leasing out way better than Fords are? Why is that? Let's find out, shall we? Let's compare the Chevy Silverado LT and the Toyota Tundra SR5 against the Ford F-150 XLT. First of all, Ford has more than 50,000 F-150s on lots across the U.S., and Chevy has 72,000 Silverado 1500s. Toyota, oh man, get ready, 17,000 units. That means that Ford and Chevy should have way better deals than Toyota, right? Not exactly. Let's say we're comparing these three trucks with exactly the same price tag. So let's call it $60,000. Sounds fair? Let's say we're not getting a discount and we're not paying over sticker, but literally paying the MSRP. Let's say we're leasing for 36 months, 15,000 miles a year, paying just the dealer and lease fees and first payment at start. Starting with the Tundra, we've got a 67% residual, meaning it's going to depreciate only about 33% over three years. This is the actual residual, and the actual money factor is 5.42% APR or 0.00226. Also, I'm going to toss in the fact that Toyota right now is offering $1,000 in lease cash in my region. I say that because it could change from region to region. You can use my cheat sheet to find out exactly what's going on in yours. Money factor is inching up on a little bit on the high side for me, but the residual is great to counterbalance it. This calculates out to a payment of $746.45 plus tax. Keep that in mind. Next, we've got the Silverado, which is also offering $1,000 in rebates, plus a bunch of other loyalty incentive, which I've kept out of this deal. The Silverado has a 62% residual and an ultra low, relatively speaking here, money factor of 4.2% APR, or I should say 0.00177. This calculates to a payment of $776 a month, about 30 bucks more. Lastly, the F-150, we've got a 61% residual on the F-150 and a 0.00246 money factor, 5.92% APR. So the lowest of all three for residuals, meaning it's going to depreciate the most and the highest of all of these three in interest rates, meaning you know what that means already. I see literally no cash being offered from Ford. And the only thing that is available is for folks who currently have a Ford or have some sort of professional affiliation with Ford. Use the cheat sheet to figure out exactly if you would qualify for any of these rebates. We get a payment in the calculator of $857 a month. So the Ford is $100 more than the Tundra and $75 more than the Silverado. Apples to apples. Here's where I may make a huge U-turn, though. I know Ford dealers, and I know Toyota dealers. Toyota dealers are not discounting like the Ford dealers are. The Tundra is brand spanking new and has way, way less inventory than the F-150 and has way more demand than the F-150. This means that not only are you not getting a discount on the Tundra, there's even a chance that you may be getting charged over the MSRP and some dealerships. Ford, on the other hand, will likely give us a fat discount that will drive that 857 down to numbers in the 600s. If I got 10% off of the $60,000 truck, meaning a $6,000 discount, divided that by 36 months, that would translate to a monthly payment of $691 after an easy 10% off sticker. We're seeing a bit better of a deal than the Tundra if we got that discount, which is very likely. Here's where I screech the brakes, though. Chevy is going to be the sweet spot. They have tons of inventory on the Silverado and a much, much better program. So getting a discount like 10% on the Silverado would be my goal personally. That way we're knocking off $160 off of $776 and not $857. What's stopping Ford from becoming better than Chevy and Toyota when it comes to lease affordability? Two things. One is in their control and one is not. What's not in their control is that their trucks depreciate faster than Chevy and Toyota. This is not something they can fix with a few keystrokes. However, what can be fixed 
that would make payments way lower is that the interest rate or money factor on these leases. They could be charging far less. They're charging 6% interest on a truck that you've got parking lots full of only that can last so, so long. And I think in the coming months, once most of these 2023s are finally gone and we're inching closer again to the end of the year, we'll see interest rates drop sharply and Ford give out promo rates on both purchase and lease scenarios, making payments in the high fives or low sixes. This will happen this year for Chevy and Ford. I do not see a chance of that happening for Toyota, though, because in the last 10 years that I've been doing this, Toyota trucks have had crazy high interest rates. But you know what's crazy about that? You can save some money on the interest rate also, like something like 50 bucks a month on the whole payment on Toyota trucks because they even let you buy down the interest rate with the security deposits. I made this video over here talking all about the benefits of putting multiple security deposits down on Toyota trucks that can substantially lower the Toyota lease payment. This is not available on Fords and Chevys. Check it out. Also, please consider subscribing. Thank you so, so much for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.